Welcome back. So in the last video, I finished without showing you how we can actually display some data on the screen. But probably you were able to do this if you watched my other Angular 2 series here. Or you bought my Angular 2 Udemy course, which of course is even better. But in case you did neither of the two things, which is okay, I will show you how we do it. We will use another form of data binding. Remember, until now we learned about string interpolation, which is using these, these double curly braces to output, well, strings in our HTML document. Well, another form, there are four in total, by the way, and you can see them all in my other Angular 2 course. We will probably see them all in this course too. So another form is property binding. Property binding, that's what the name implies. It binds data to some properties. Now we can bind data to properties of HTML elements, like for example, the value property of an input element. We can bind data to that so that we set the value of that input element. We can bind properties to directive properties. So if we have some kind of directive where we want to pass some data into, we will see this later in this course. And we can bind properties to that kind of R directives, by the way, components to our custom components. We can bind properties there too. So we have a property here in our Weber item, this Weber item property. And it would be great if some data was bound to this Weber item. Now, in order to be able to do this, we have to tell Angular 2 that this very component here, property here, excuse me, is a property which well, where data can be bound to, which can be used in data binding. There are two ways to define this. The first is to add another metadata here, another configuration to our metadata, which is called inputs. This takes an array with a lot of strings in it, and each string defines which properties of this component can be used with property binding. So for example, I could write Weber item here, and this would, well, enable us to use this um, with property binding. Now let me show you how property binding then works. In my Weber list component here, I will pass the data to my Weber item with this property binding I just set up. And I can do this by using square brackets here. And then I type Weber items, the name of the property to which I'm binding, Weber item, therefore, here, Weber item. This name is the one I'm binding to because I enabled property binding for this property. And here in the quotation marks, I then say, what do I want to bind? Now, this is also a Weber item, but yeah, I know it might look a little confusing now, but this Weber item in the quotation marks refers to this local variable, which again is the weather item we're currently at in this current iteration in our loop here. Whereas the weather item in the squared brackets refers to the property to which we're binding. Let me save this. And now you can see it reloaded and we actually see our data. So passing the data into the child is working. Now as you already saw, the naming was kind of confusing here and maybe we don't really like weather item here. But we like weather item here, it's a good property name here. So can we change it such that our internal name and the component to which we're sending the data uses weather item, but all other components which are binding to this property use, let's say, just item? Yes, we can do this. And we do this by adding a colon here and then item. This allows us to specify an alias, which means internally we're using weather item, but externally item will be the name. Now, as you can see, our app is broken and this is because we're still using weather item here. This does not work anymore because externally outside our weather item component, we now have to use item. As you can see, now it's working again. So this is how we assign such an alias. Now, if you remember, I was talking about two possibilities of setting up data binding. Now using the inputs metadata here is one of them. 
I'm going to comment this out to show you the second one. Let me save this and now you'll see it's broken of course. And we need the input annotation which we add by using add input. Add sign in general in TypeScript allows us to add decorators, annotations to certain elements, in this case this property. Now we're missing an import here, import here. And I automatic, automatically added this, but you have to make sure to add this input import from Angular 2 Core. You only need this when using this add input annotation. You're not needing this when you're setting up inputs in our component metadata because the component metadata is already imported here. So now this will do pretty much the same, but in order to also use an alias here, we have to define this alias inside the parentheses here. So we just used item and therefore I'm just adding item here. And now it's working again. Now whichever way you prefer is really up to you. This way, using it in the component metadata, groups all the definitions in one central place at the top of our file and well, the component metadata. However, this way, annotating each property on its own allows you to very quickly see which properties are bound and which are not. And finally, the decision is up to you. So this is how we pass data into our components by using property binding. And now we're actually outputting the items we have in our array by looping through them and binding the data to our Weber item component. See you in the next video. Bye.